Ramey. I'm a postdoctoral research fellow at the University of Windsor, where we have the Great Lakes Institute for Environmental Research. Okay, thank you. Brendan Vial, number 36879. Uh, so, Greg Lear, the focus is to improve our understanding of the ecology of the Great Lakes Basin and to improve our understanding of, uh, of human impacts on uh, the Great Lakes ecosystem. The main goal is to try and understand the depth and temperature preferences of the different salmon and trout species in Lake Ontario. So we're focusing on lake trout, Chinook salmon, and Atlantic salmon. And the tags will let us know uh, what the what depths and temperatures the fish prefer to, to spend time in. And we can look at seasonal differences and compare different times of day and look at fine scale behaviors. So, Diving behaviors and uh, and seasonal and seasonal behaviors of the different species, and so uh, we think that information will be really valuable for, for fisheries management and for the fisheries. Seven nine three two seven two six. Thanks. So the tag is about uh, 8 or 10 centimeters long. It sort of just looks like a, a really big battery or something. They're bright orange. And, uh, and so the way they work, we can hook them up to the computer and set the tag to record as often as we want. And so we have the tags recording once a minute for a year. They'll record a depth and a temperature reading every minute. And then after a year, they'll pop off the fish and float to the surface. And then we wait for somebody to find the fish or find the tag and uh, send it into us so we can download the data off of it. Essentially just how it works is we run two lines of uh, thick model filament line, plastic line, through the, the muscles in the back of the fish. And from there, the, that attaches to the tag. So the tag kind of is attached to what is sort of like a backpack on the back of the fish, attached through the fish's muscle. Um, and so then after, after a year, uh, the, the tag is programmed to release from that plastic uh, bracket and then float up to the surface. So the tag just sort of trails behind the fish's back around where the fish's tail is as the fish swims along. That's a question we get a lot, of, what's the effect of the tag on the fish? Um, the short answer is we don't really know very well what the effects are. Um, there probably is a, you know, there's a bit of extra drag because of the tag, so there might be a bit of an extra energetic expenditure, a bit of extra uh, energy required for the fish when it's swimming at high speeds. Um, other than that though, we don't, we don't really have good reason to, to worry too much about it. We do know that some uh, fish have uh, been able to survive for a full year with the tag on and obviously continue feeding and growing. So these tags are letting us, are our data loggers, so all the data gets saved on the tag and it's telling us the depth and the temperatures that the fish is moving through. Um, but the tags, these tags won't tell us where in the lake the fish are, so uh, we're hoping that in the coming years we're going to be doing some telemetry projects and what that means is putting in electronic tags in the cat in the fish um, that transmit a unique acoustic sort of barcode a pinging sound from each fish that uh, has a unique code for each individual and then we can have underwater receivers set up throughout the lake to listen for those fish um, and so that sort of uh, tracking project would allow us to look horizontally where the fish are moving throughout the lake 